Hello my friends and welcome back to episode 2 of our brand new series. Now we made a lot of strong progress last episode, amazing, we've got the builder's hut built, which you can see in the background over there, just over my shoulder, very cool. And this episode we're pressing on full guns blazing, we're going to be trying to get the town hall built, which you can't really see but there's some fence posts there, that's where it is and that's what we're going to try and aim for this episode. Now as you can see I've made a few little quality of life improvements to my hovel, it's not, it's not quite a one star hovel, it's like 1.5 now, uh, <laughs> yeah maybe. But it's not quite an Airbnb yet so don't go booking this place up on that website. Anyway enough chatter, let's jump in. So first off a massive thank you to all of you guys who commented on the last episode and a big thank you to my Patreon members and my YouTube members, you guys are amazing. And I'll be putting the colonist names you guys suggested into the database so there's a chance they'll come up. Right, so where are we going, what are we doing? Oh man, um, well first up, the big thing I didn't make last episode that I really wanted to was a sleeping bag, so let's get on that. Oh aha, I almost forgot my, uh, my whoopee cushion, what would I do without that? So we're looking for some wool, I definitely have some. I'm not sure if you can use different types of wool, to make the sleeping bag, but I think you probably can. Anyway, where is the recipe for it? Sleeping bag. Oh, there we go. It's literally just three wool in a row. However, these wools are white, so I might have to dye some of this wool. Flipperooski the recipe. Now, I made the mistake of checking out what a white sleeping bag was from Traveler's Backpack. Turns out you need to put it into one of those backpacks otherwise it doesn't work. So yeah, sleeping bag, amazing. But speaking of backpacks, that reminds me, Traveler's backpack is freaking amazing. And before we get started on the town hall, I wanna just give myself some quality of life improvements, things that are gonna make the playthrough much easier going forwards, and a backpack from Sophisticated Backpack, definitely the way to go. We'll need leather, a chest, and some string. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hey Astra, I'm gonna leave you here because I don't want to lose you this early in the series. That would be a nightmare. Do I have to have a funeral? Dig a grave? Oh, you might come back to haunt me. Uh, do cats haunt people? I guess I, I've never heard of, like, dog ghosts. Can you imagine? Like, I think it'd be really scary if, like, a, a new horror movie had the ghost of a dog. Always woofing, licking your ear while you sleep, digging holes in your garden. Oh, man. Anyway, yeah, so we're looking for leather. And we mentioned this before, there's a few other ways to get leather in this mod pack, but far and away the easiest is to find some cows. So check the map, don't see any heifers, oh wait no, over there there's some heifers, so we're just gonna make a mental note that it's down in that direction, here we go. So there's been some really cool game releases recently, uh, I'm recording this probably about a week before it goes out because for the first few episodes I wanted to get all of them out in quick succession and that meant like a lot of hard work to begin with and loads of editing afterwards. But yeah, one of the games that's released recently is Baldur's Gate 3, pretty freaking amazing if you're playing it at home. Let me know how your playthrough is going in the comments section because, oh, mine is going pretty, pretty weirdly. I'm playing like an evil character, a drow, and uh, I'm getting myself in a bit of trouble with it. But it's cool, right? I like when RPGs let you play evil characters and they don't massively punish you for taking evil options. Where were these cows? Have I completely missed them? Anyway, here we go, cows. Boom, so what we're looking for is enough leather for a backpack that is four, four leather. And this old heifer didn't give us any, ugh. You know what, if I was smart, what I'd be doing is bringing the cows back home and breeding them. Do horses drop leather? I think they might do. Oh, but I don't want to destroy this majestic beast. Well, let's do it anyway. Whatever. Oh, and luck be me, it's got two leather on it. Amazing. It's just one of those things, there's so much to Minecraft that, you know, honestly, especially where vanilla's concerned, I forget, I mean right now, I could tell you exactly how to build a mechanism tripling or setup without skipping a beat, but I couldn't tell you where to find rabbits, or acacia, or some of the weirder vanilla things that are newer to the game. Now you know what, it's slim pickings for leather, so what I'm going to do is think about a way to get cows back. In vanilla you have to use, I guess, wheat or whatever they're going to eat, 
to drag them back manually. It takes a, a, a massive amount of time. You can use a leash as well, but that's also a bit of a pain. But I wonder if there's any nets or, or balls or things you can capture mobs in. So I'll tell you what, actually we can get leads if we use straw from Farmer's Delight. And that's as simple as getting a straw bale. But where does straw come from? Obtained by cutting grassy crops and plants with a knife. Okay, let's get a knife. But it's one of those things, right? We get so distracted early on in the series, but there's also so many things that are essential to our quality of life. Like number one, we're going to need a lot of iron and um, minerals and ores from underground. And I just need a way to get them, a way to store them, a way to dig them quicker, you know, and it's just, ooh, quite taxing. Knife. So we're looking for a farmer's knife from Farmer's Delight. Oh, and you can make a flint knife, which is pretty good for us. Stick and flint. There we go, a flint. Ooh, hunt and gather iron torch. So Farmer's Delight straw is used for, I think I remember it, quite a lot of things. There we go, lovely stuff. But what exactly is it used for? Rope, which is used to make a rope and nail for a hammock. Very cool. A safety net. That sounds pretty amazing. Also used to make organic compost. You know, Farmer's Delight is a mod that I've never really looked at. So that could be quite cool. And what's canvas used for? Baskets, paintings, books. Oh, it's like a replaceable for leather. Oh, no way. Hanging canvas sign. That sounds very cool. So yeah, straw pretty cool and it's pretty easy to get. It looks like the flint knife doesn't have durability as well, which is amazing. And it kind of makes me wonder why there's different calibers and levels of knives. Maybe you get more straw when using better knives. Because at the moment, I'm not getting much from using the flint. Luckily enough, though, there's loads of this grass stuff around. So that's amazing. And we really want to clear out this area anyway. I wonder what happens if I use a flint knife on leaves. Uh, we don't get straw, but that's fair enough. Oh, and actually, using the flint knife on something that wasn't grass has removed some durability. Okay, good to know. So we've got two goals this series. Number one, we're going to develop a colony and get it quite populated. Now, in the last Mine Colony series, we built every single building there was. However, we're going to be a bit cramped for space here, and I can't really rely on using a cave to kind of cheat in all the extra buildings that we need. So what I'm going to have to do, I think, is focus on the most important buildings. Also, goal number two is going to be to build a farm and build every single type of crop and fruit that this mod pack has to offer. Yeah, that's right. We're going to build absolutely every single plant. We're going to cultivate everything on this farm. A little bit of bees, a little bit of trees, and a little bit of, um, well, you know, there isn't really anything that rhymes with bees and trees that means crops. But yeah, crops. And it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. We're going to build a farmhouse that's going to have a massive farm kitchen. Amazing. So we can build all the food. Oop. Oh, God, I'm starving. But I'm very excited to go forwards on this goal. All right, that's enough straw for now. Let's go and make some leads and bring some cows home. Wait, what? Do you guys hear that? What the? What the dickens? There's music. Where's it coming from? <laughs> what is this? Oh god, I hope it's not copyright. It sounds like it's coming from underground. Oh my god, it's, <laughs> it's a musical zombie party. What the hell? You son of a gun. I don't know what you're cooking, but I want it. Ow! Oh my god, he hits hard. Oh my god, several hours later. Luckily my knowledge of death has gone up. Where's his stuff? Oh my god, he didn't even drop anything. Just some like freaking zombie meat. Ugh, what a waste. Well, you know. Anyway, I'm getting way distracted. Leather, that's what we want. We're gonna put some cows in the pen that we made for Astra. But also, why stop there? I've got a bunch of leads now. If I can get some sheep back here as well, that'll help me get loads of wool too. Pigs not so important because they're basically just food. So yeah, let's make some more fences. And just to make this easy, we're just going to put the fences uh, right next to this existing one. Okay, two pens and we're ready to rock. 
Let's go grab these cows and these sheep. Hello, my friend. So how's this work? I've always just used crops to get animals back. But yeah, looks like the lead is working a treat. What if you can put a lead on a bee? Did you know you can actually freeze bees and uh, when you thaw them out, they come back to life? I'm not quite sure why you'd ever need to know that information or how helpful it could be in the grand scheme of life. But there you go. You learn something new every day. And if you want to freeze a bee, you can. Okay, two will do. We're going to... Oh, no. There's a forest fire. We're going to run into risks of inbreeding, but honestly... Not too worried about that. Wait. Oh, no. Where's your friend gone? Bloody hell. Come here. Where's your lead? There we go. Mission accomplished. Now, how do I get the leads off of these bad boys? Just a right click. And let's get out of dodge. Now, this is all temporary. Once we get these animals in here later on, we can worry about giving them a nice, bigger, free range place to roam. But let's go and grab some cows now. A great trick as well is to put carpet on top of fences as a sneaky way to jump back into them without the animals inside being able to escape. So I'll make some grey carpet like that and uh, just show you how this works. Bada bing bada boom, now I can get out and hopefully they can't get out. I don't think they can get out like that anyway. It looks a bit ugly, but it works. Honestly, that could be the name of so many modded Minecraft series. It looks ugly, but it works. Although in my case, it just looks ugly and often doesn't work either. As the sun sets though, let's just, uh, you know, get to breeding. Go on, kiss, make a baby, and you two boys, or girls, or whatever. The parrots and the bats. Bam! What a result. So we've got cows, we've got sheep, that's a big thing ticked off our list. We're not going to be able to get leather from this farm until these guys are all grown up, and we get many more cows. So let's go and see what the town hall requires to be built. It's going to be the crowning jewel of this episode. And I'm going to wait with the builder. I'm going to give him all the resources he needs and then start him off so we can film it in action. Oh, now one thing to worry about actually is food. These guys need to eat. Otherwise, well, they'll either get annoyed and leave like this Russian lady. I can help you with that. The food I have is too raw. Okay. So if you want to go into a colonist backpack straight off the bat, just right click. I think you need an empty hand as well. Hold shift, right click, and you go straight in there. Oh yeah, and she's got an egg. So yeah, no wonder she can't eat that. We'll give her a piece of bread. Bread for my dudes. Just to make sure these guys have the strength they need to continue. I guess they've been wandering around and just picking up eggs from the floor. A word of advice from me, you guys at home, don't eat eggs you find on the ground. It's not going to be a good time, you know? Always obey the three second rule. If it's been on the floor for less than three seconds, it's good to eat. Otherwise, it's, it's gone. Don't trust it. It's going to kill you. So let's take a look. Colonial build style is supposed to be quite easy, but I reckon the materials... Wait. The materials for building this... Here we go. Build options are going to be quite tricky. Yeah, diorite. I mean, that's not easy. Coarse dirt. Lectern. You know what? Actually, none of this stuff is too tricky. Even grass we have because the builder gathered loads while he was, uh, you know, just digging things out. And what I'm going to do now is just go through all of these things. Everything's pretty simple to make. The coarse dirt is just gravel and dirt. Cobblestone and its various incarnations. Dandelions are everywhere. Diorite, I think we had in the supply ship. The list goes on and on, but I think we've got most of the things we need. And as far as wood goes, it's just oak and spruce. Oh my god, lots and lots of cobblestone. But again, shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to gather those things up and chuck them in to the town hall building. So one of the huge things that helps us with modded Minecraft is the ulti mine ability. Being able to gather loads and loads of cobblestone like this is just freaking awesome. We go through pickaxe like nobody's business. But ultimately, this is netting us all the cobblestone we're going to need. Shears on grass to get grass. One of the big mistakes I made in my first Mine Colony series was not realizing this. And also, it's time to dig, dig, chop, chop some of these sprucey boys. There we go. Again, though, do remember to pick up these saplings. They're super essential to maintaining a healthy forest. 
So here over here to the builder's hut and yeah, let's just start offloading some of these things. We're gonna have to go back and forth a bit, bringing back all of the things we need. We do have all of this stuff to hand, no sweat. So also another big way you can help out your builders is just make sure they're not gonna pick up anything that's gonna clog up their pack. Uh, and so what we're gonna do there is use the shears to just trim away all of these bushes and bits of grass. That way we don't risk them filling up their pack with seeds, but also we have the added bonus of gathering some bits of grass that we can use for future builds. So coarse dirt, something he's gonna need very early on in the build. And it's good to kind of think about a building, imagine in, in your head and work out what he's gonna need early on and give him those things first. But also the builder will help you and tell you that, hey, I'm missing this, go and grab me this. It just takes some time, you know? So time to load him up with the tools he's gonna need. Now he won't need too many axes because axes are used to chop wood. There's not much wood around there. He might need a few pickaxes because obviously they're used for stone. But honestly, the big one, the big tool that a builder needs the most of is always going to be shovels. So we'll give him plenty of these to get going with. Okay, let's hook him up and watch this thing go down. There you go, my friend. All the tools you need. Some shears as well. Give you the shovel. Probably my pickaxe and my stone axe. And looks like he's going to get going. Okay, let's see what happens. So construction commences and he's making quite good speed on this. I think removing all of the leaves and the shrubbery was a really good idea. Now, as far as buildings go, the town hall, at least this one from this pack, is pretty freaking huge, which is good and bad. In the end, it's gonna look huge and amazing, but it does mean it's gonna take a long time to build and require a huge amount of resources. But it looks like we're at the midway point now. Festa has finished what he can with the build and the good news is he's kind of started to build some of the basement level, I guess. But it looks like he needs a little bit of attention before we continue. So let's jump in. So we're not quite at the halfway point, but I do think that we're going to need some andesite to continue forwards. We are also going to need some poppies and some dandelions. But luckily enough, on the map, these red dots and these yellow dots, I think they are the flowers we need. They're quite easy to see, so that's another top tip. Oh yeah, right away, here we are. Dandelions and poppies, perfect. Okay, time to chuck these into the builder's hut and load him up for round two of the build. Uncle Fester back on the build. Now it's a bit jarring to have to go back into the builder's hut and give him more materials because he didn't have enough space. That's why it's gonna be really important for us to get a warehouse built so we can avoid these kinds of problems in the future. There's not really much to say about this build. It's epic in scale. It's a bit too big, if I'm being honest, for a town hall. When you're picking a style from Mine Connollys, you kind of want a smaller footprint for the buildings as possible. That's just gonna make so many things easier for you going forwards, especially regarding planning, because colonists just don't like traveling far. And the bigger your buildings, the further they have to go. There's a nice mix though of andesite, cobble, oak, but it's still a level one building, which means the building materials are gonna be very basic to make it easily achievable in the early game. But it's going up with quite some speed now. There's a table and chairs, the town hall block, and this mother trucker is about to hit the roof. Oh yeah, there we go. Oak support beams and even, ooh, a nice pattern on the floor up there as well. And the torches go down, which are the finishing touches on this build. And I think any second, we're gonna see some fireworks. Ooh, oh, well, we'll hear them anyway. Okay, let's get in game and see what it looks like. All right, all right. So we go through the front door. Here we go, no doors, just an open doorway, but that's fine. Now the town hall block is sunken down here a bit, but you know what, Fester? You've done a cracking job. I love the table and chairs. So what else is new with this room? What can we do with this building? Well, let's hit the town hall block and see what's new with the interface there. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, now there's already a brand new button here, the town map. 
So let's see what exactly that does. Drop off a normal scale Minecraft map in the Town Hall inventory first to unlock the map. Oh, okay, amazing. Well, we can do that. There was a map on the supply ship. So let's go and grab that. So here we go. Now, the way these maps work is it has to be, I think, a red map first. So right click to read the map, get the map visual, put it in the inventory like this. So it's not a blank map. And then when we click the town map button, oh yeah, there we go. Lovely. It's, um, it's not amazing. It's pretty cool though. It gives us a good idea of where exactly specific colonists are on the colony. That's going to come in really handy for tracking down people that get lost. Well, but a bing, but a boom. A massive thank you for watching this episode. We didn't get a huge amount done. However, the town hall is built and this is a pretty huge building. We did get some animals in our animal pen and we made some quality of life improvements here and there. Next episode though promises to be a big one. I've got some plans about how to make my own farmhouse and do some decorations around the colony as well. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and pop a comment in the comment section because if you watch this far, I want you to put your favorite D&D class into the comment section and I will give it a like and a thumbs up and maybe even a reply. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care.